Hello, Tensor friends. Um, this video is based on the book, General Relativity and Intuitive Introduction by Vile Hervoven. I probably just butchered that. I did the best I could. On the Profound Physics website, uh, here's the date, and he published it. I bought this book. There's a link to it in the description. Uh, this is a good book. It has some okay parts. It has some good parts. It has some excellent parts. I asked the uh, author if I could make some videos based upon this book, and he said, yes, I could. So I'm going to do that based upon uh, bits and pieces of it that I really, really like. I've uh, turned back to this book many, many times looking for references, uh, which is what I primarily use it for. It's, it's very good at that. Uh, since I'm on a Christoffel symbols kick, I thought I'd keep that motif up. And let's look at the geometric meaning of Christoffel the symbols. All right, a quick review. What is a Christoffel symbol? Okay, we have some vector which can be expressed as a linear combination of its components and basis vectors. If we take a directional derivative as an example of that vector with respect to a coordinate, since this is a function of two variables, we have to use the product rule, first times derivative of the second, plus the second times derivative of the first. And we have this thing, the partial derivative of a basis vector with respect to a coordinate. And that turns out to be this. So a derivative of a vector is a vector, and that can also, <coughs> excuse me, be expressed as a linear combination of its components and basis vectors. And you see we have two free indexes, i and j. They're both in the covariant position. We put those down. And we know this is a, multi, a, a, a multiple term here. So in three dimensions, this would be six terms. So we have a summation index the K, all right? So this is actually the mathematical definition of the Christoffel, the symbol. Well, what is this rascal? What is, what is this geometric meaning, okay? Let's look at this. Let's let I equal two and J equal one. Okay, so our, 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 our free indexes are two and one, I and J, so we can't change that. So we write down two and one, two and one. Then we have a dummy index, a summation index. So in the first case, it's one. The second case is two. So this vector here, even though it's derivative, it's a vector, is made up of its components and basis vectors. So it has two parts. Now, what if you wanted to find just one part of this, of any vector? Remember, what you can do is multiply it by the dot product of a basis vector. In this case, we're going to use a contravariant basis of the vector. So we dot product both sides, and we get this expression. Now, what are these things? Do you remember this? A dot product of a basis vector with a reciprocal basis vector. That's what we're going to call it. Mathematicians, close your ears. Is ej dot ei dot ej when they're in the covariant and contravariant positions is the delta function. So if i equals j, it's equal to one. If i does not equal j, it's equal to zero. So this is equal to one and that's equal to zero. So we get this. So we found this one component by dotting this vector with another basis vector. And likewise, we can do the same thing here. Okay. So if we dot it with E2 in the covariant position, then we get this component. Well, what, what does that mean? Let's look at what we've actually done here. Okay, this is right from his book. It's a nice little drawing, much better than I could do. So we have some funky coordinate the system here with and some the, the, the space time where everything is curved and the basis vectors are going crazy. They're moving all over the place. So if, this, if something is moving here, a particle is moving, and at this point here, we look at the basis vector, right? And now we move a little bit further along. These basis vectors are changing. That's what Christoffel symbols are for. If you just look at one of them, like E2, look at this. It's moved a whole lot. And this 
vector here now, which it is a vector, that's uh, is in between these two is this the change in E2 with respect to X1. So we're moving along the X1 and X1 coordinate line, and we're looking at the change in the E2 basis vector. Well, what we just showed above is that thing has components, and we found them. So this is that red vector you just saw, right? And it has two components. It has this component with the E1 basis vector, and it has this component with the E2 basis vectors. So <clears throat> that adds a little bit for me. It adds a little bit of insight into what are these things actually are? Well, you can look at them geometrically, and I think it helps. Okay, uh, I'll stop there, and we'll probably do some more. See you later.